Hi, this is Sarah Joy Albrecht, and this is the first time I've sat down all day. It's 11:25 uh, at night, and the house is finally quiet. Um, just sitting here with a cup of decaf coffee, which is like my evening relaxing treat as of late. And uh, anyway, um, it's just it's been an interesting week. My husband is overseas, and uh, I have five kids. My 30th birthday is coming up this month. Um, and here in Japan, it's uh, finally Haname. We live up north, so it takes a while for the flowers to bloom. Um, but the cherry blossoms are gorgeous. And so the kids and I went out this afternoon and um, did a little Haname picnic. It was really, really fun. Um, but that was preceded by the most nightmarish trip to the grocery store uh, <laughs> where kids are screaming, I have to go to the bathroom and I don't want that kind of food and I want this and... And it was just really, really crowded. And meanwhile, <laughs> this like diva Japanese woman comes up to me and she meant very well, but she just kept asking, where are you from? Where are you from? And I'm like, I'm from Philadelphia. And I know you can't understand me right now, but <laughs> my kid has to pee and we're stuck. You know? All right, it wasn't quite that mean, but it was, it was tough because she just kept asking where we were from and we were literally trapped for five minutes while Leah was screaming, I have to pee, and there's... <laughs> it was nuts. And of course, when you get into a ba Japanese bathroom, too, it's the most frightening thing in the world to a three-year-old because you're either stuck with a Japanese-style toilet, which is essentially a porcelain hole in the floor, or even in nice places, they just have nicer porcelain holes, um, or you're stuck with a shower toilet, which is fantastic for adults, but man, it just takes once for a three-year-old to push the wrong buttons and she does not want to touch those toilets again. So like either way, you're screwed going to the bathroom with her because <laughs> it's loud screaming. <laughs> so that was my day. That was my day. We finally did get to the park. It tuckered them out and they are finally sleeping and it's finally quiet. And uh, I'm just sitting here having a cup of decaf coffee and catching up on my emails and working on a few articles and I uh, came across something that really triggered a powerful reaction in me and I wanted to share it with my friends out there in the internet world. Um, I'm not going to tell you who this is from because I'm going to speak negatively of it. Um, but uh, if you wanted to do a search on the words, you could probably find it. Uh, I found it on the site Divine Caroline, which is a place where I occasionally will publish some of my work um, if I just want to get something out there. All right, so uh, this is from an article. This is, uh, I feel like I'm playing taboo where I can't actually say the name. Um, <laughs> so bear with me. This article is in the uh, parenting category. It's uh, in the category called mom's time just for me. So here's how it goes. It says, what is it about multitasking that makes us think we are so much more efficient by doing so? Today I stood in the nine items or less line at the grocery store. There was a woman at the front of the line tying things up with at the checkout because she was on her cell phone paying with a credit card and had a baby on one arm. Now I ask you, what would it would it have been too much trouble for her to focus on one thing, such as completing her transaction at the checkout so that the rest of us could get our perishables home and into our refrigerators before they spoiled? Apparently it was too much trouble for her to focus and she held up the line for a good six minutes or so because after she paid she then had to take the time to focus and put her credit card back in the appropriate slot in her wallet with her baby in her hand. Now what is so fascinating about this is that this woman was entirely oblivious to the fact that she just didn't care about anyone but herself and I'm sure she thought she was being a super mom and accomplishing it all by buying groceries, babysitting, and taking a phone call. But what she doesn't understand is that her, it, that her inability to properly juggle all three tasks in a timely and efficient manner inconveniences the rest of us. <laughs> okay, now, <laughs> sorry, it really made me upset. Um, first of all, this is a story that many of us uh, have seen before. And um, we have to remember that it's also a story that uh, could very well be about any of us. And um, I, I just have noticed a trend lately, uh, let's call it the anti-supermom trend, um, that I think is both healthy and dangerous at the same time. Um, it's healthy to be realistic and it's healthy to you know, ex examine what am I doing? Am I doing this for other people? Am I doing this for my family? 
do I, uh, am I doing this because I'm trying to, uh, to portray myself as a certain way or to have a certain status or just evaluate your motivation for why you're doing what you're doing. Um, and it's, it's very healthy to realize that you don't have to be uh, a Stepford wife, Martha Stewart type person just to be a mom. Um, so that's a healthy aspect of it. The dangerous aspect of it is that um, I, I really get concerned when people run down moms uh, and particularly when women run down other women. Um, and I am really concerned that this trend to be raw and real uh, is, is just a cloaked way of bringing other people down. And I just really want to encourage uh, my viewers, uh, people that read my blog, my subscribers, uh, to avoid doing this. It's okay to be raw, it's okay to be real, but please do not run down other people. Uh, a great scene, if you want an example of this, because I have seen it when I uh, worked in corporate America, is uh, the scene in uh, Dennis the Menace where uh, Dennis's mom, Alice Mitchell, needs to, uh, she is having trouble finding a babysitter for Dennis, and her uh, coworker comes by and she's clicking her long fingernails on the desk, and she goes, hello, mom. And, and she talks about how she has a life because she, I don't have kids, but I have a life. And you know, women in the workplace are treated like that. Um, and so one common theme though, is that it seems to be women that are treating other women that way. And I mean, come on, it's 2010. Do we really have to run each other down uh, in order to make ourselves feel good about ourselves? And the answer is resoundingly no. Um, what is the solution to this? The solution is be yourself. And if, if you are a person, not everybody, keep in mind, not everybody is the same cookie cutter type person. And that is awesome. It's really, really cool that there are so many different types of people in this world. The word that I want you to walk away with is support. Uh, we women need to support other women and not just women who are exactly like us. We need to support women who are different than us too. Uh, women, moms can support women who, uh, who work and who do not have any kids. Um, women in the workplace can be supportive of stay-at-home moms. Uh, single moms can be supportive of married moms and married moms can be supportive of single moms. Uh, and the list can go on. I encourage you if, if you, uh, if, especially if you've been critical of a particular demographic, to, uh, to get to know them better. You might actually learn something uh, you might learn about a whole new aspect of yourself that you didn't think was there. And so I just encourage you for your own growth not to box yourself in by only uh, only hanging out with your peers and listening to the opinion of your peers, but rather to broaden your perspective and and to, uh, to support other women. Anyway, Sarah Joy Albrecht, Five Kids, Rural Japan. You can read about my adventures on my blog, sarahjoyalbrecht.com. I've been blogging for several years now. Um, just for fun. I love it. And, uh, I love to write. I always have. And like I said earlier, uh, moms who make and do.com is a new site that I'm working on for women. Um, if you liked the message that I had today, there will be much more of those kinds of, uh, tidbits of encouragement for you there. And, uh, if you're interested in writing and sharing your story to be of encouragement to other women, um, I'd like to hear from you. I, I like some, um, some passionate and powerful writers. Uh, contributing to my site. So signing off, uh, I'd love to hear your comments. Um, what trends have you observed? What uh, what do you think when you hear the word super mom? And uh, what do you think the solution is? Do you agree, disagree? Do you have your own? Uh, I want to hear from you. So thanks a lot. Signing off. Bye.